Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of Carolyn Talks and today I am joined by the director and animator Chun Chun Chang to discuss her animated shot Aura. It's a very interesting and a beautiful anime, um, animated film. I saw it and I was like, I've never seen an animated film like this in the fact that it's very, very, I think, hyper realistic, but also still kind of dreamy. It has a very dreamlike quality for it. So before we get into the film, I'm going to ask Chin Chin just to say a little bit about herself and about her um, her directing about the film. So Chin Chin. Um, hi, I'm Chin Chin. I'm a Taiwanese filmmaker and motion designer. And I came to the US four years ago to study animation and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell me a little bit about Aura? So it's about this man who's caught up in this very turbulent storm in the middle of the ocean and he encounters a goddess. And I'm not sure if he if she's a goddess of the sky. I'm not sure if she's a goddess of the ocean. Like it's not, I, I think she kind of crosses both realms. So could you just talk a bit about your inspiration for Aura? Oh, my inspiration for Aura came from the Greek mythology. They have a character is also called Aura, and she's the goddess of the wind. Mm -hmm. So in this film, I was thinking that she would represent both the breeze and the wind of inside the storm. Mm -hmm. So she could be both aggressive and gentle. Yeah, yeah, because there is that sense of it being a Greek, um, a Greek um, play in the fact that not only through the sound design and the score, but just in the way how you it, it like the ship in particular, it does look like a, a ship that would have been used um, in that time. And because it's a one sail ship and he's out in the middle of this ocean. So could you just tell me, like, are, is there a name for, for your two characters for, for the goddess? She's Aura, but also for the male, the male character. He's just a sailor. He's just <laughs> he a sailor? Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, so for this sailor, um, is there a story behind how he got, like, how he just ended up in the middle of the ocean by himself? Because he's not, he doesn't have a crew. I'm assuming he's a fisherman. So like, he's just stranded. Um, is there a story behind him and how he got to be where he is at the start of the film? I was just thinking that, um, he was just resting on the ocean and <laughs> and she bumping to her, the, the, the goddess. And the inspiration of the sailor came from the an Icelandic magical stave called Wayfinder. Mm. It's a, it, the purpose of it is to find is to help the sailor or uh, the travelers to find their way back home during the severe weather. So that's the backbone of the character. Mm, yeah, because um, like there's this whole thing, and not only in Greek mythology, but I guess also in um, European or even like Western um, storytelling, where we tell the story of sailors. A lot of their interactions do have to do with female um, deities and goddesses, whether they're mermaids or they're like goddesses of the skies, like are and storms like Aura. And there is this sense of um, of them looking for themselves and they find these women and they either they either get lost, especially with the mermaids, like with the with with, mm -hmm. with regards to mythology with uh, men and mermaids, like these men get shipwrecked and the mermaids are used, especially as sirens too. Sirens they lead them astray. Whereas I found um interesting that in your in your film, like Aura seems to provide not only guidance but also solace for him. So she's kind of like um the opposite of what of the myths that we usually get surrounding sailors. And women. So, I um, was was there anything with regards to your storytelling where you thought about that and that was intentional? I would say I think she's both. Like she's the force that drag him into the storm, and she's also the force that release him. So, <laughs> yeah. No, I just think it's in I just think it's interesting, and also um, the there's this there's this scene where he gets as you said like she drags him out into the storm and then she kind of like create gives solace and that's um imitated in the scene where he gets where he plunges into the into the ocean mm -hmm. and um i i want to talk a bit about the animation in particular for this not only for the whole film but in this scene in particular because the water droplets and it's very hyper realistic to me in the fact that it looks like real water it doesn't look like animated water if you know what i mean and for and uh, from your perspective as the animator like could you tell me a little bit about the techniques and the 
technology you use to create the animation, especially for the water? Oh, I use X particle for the waters and the oceans and the 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 wind, uh, the, the the clouds, and I also use Cinema 4D and Maya for the whole animations and. Mm, I, I, I know a little bit about Maya because I recently interviewed um, Frank Abney. He directed um, his first short canvas and mm -hmm. he said he used Maya for that. And, and Maya was used a lot, especially with regards to like getting the texture, the hair and the skin of his characters. So I could I, I like I know nothing about animation people. But when I saw it, that's that's the first thing I thought of, because like the, the texture of like their hair and their skin, especially the eyes, like you get very close up, this close up shot of Aura's eyes mm -hmm. and I, and like the eyelashes and they seem very realistic and very, um and very, what's the, tangible? Like you could touch them, especially, I just love how the water's animated. Like I just, <laughs> I'm in love with it, honestly. And it just reminded me a bit of that. Um, I'll say, um, I was trying to combine both 3D look and 2D to make them feel realistic, but at the same time, those two feels a little bit surreal, like because there are the whole situation is like a dream. So, mm. so I was trying to put a little bit of using the the layering of the clouds to make it feels has the 2D textures, like the yeah. warmth of 2D. Yeah. Yeah, the clouds do have the more traditional animated and 2D mm -hmm. um, look to them. And um, was there a particular reason for doing that instead of just doing 3D for the whole um, animation? Oh, that's because the original inspiration came from mythology. Mm -hmm. And you can see a lot of mythology being captured in ancient paintings. And those paintings are 2D. So I was imagining like, okay, so this film should have a little bit of the texture of it. Hmm. And now can we just talk a little bit also about the music because the music is composed by um, Sturdivant Adams and mm -hmm. the sound director and sound designer is Daniel Blank. Could, so could you tell me about working with the two of them to create the sound that you wanted for this film? Because as usual with most animated shorts, there is no dialogue. All of mm -hmm. the atmosphere and all of the song we get comes from like this, the music and like the sounds of like, in this case, the wind and the water. So could you just tell me about designing the sound and the score that you wanted? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to add the dialogues because I, I was thinking that you could provide more space for both music and visuals. And working with them was fun. Like I asked Stan to provide like continuous sound effects for both thunders, wind, oceans, like everything. So mm -hmm. we could provide a kind of immersive feeling. And for Sturdivant, I asked him to kind of go the opposite of the, or the usual music. Like if there is a climax, usually the music will be more dramatic or aggressive. But because this film happened during the storm and the climax is actually inside the eye of the storm. So it's kind of opposite. So I asked him to start with something aggressive and more epic. And then when it's the climax, everything should be like pure and simple. Mm, yeah, because when you talk about like storms or even like things like hurricanes, like when you, when you get into the eye, of the storm and the hurricane, it goes dead silent. Like I've mm -hmm. experienced storms like that, where it's like a whole bunch of noise, like the wind and like all of the like anything that's outside is blowing around, and it's a whole bunch of noise. So when you once you get into the eye, it's dead silent. It's calm. Like you can't hear birds, you can't hear animals, you can't hear anything, and it creates this sense of um disquiet. And you know that what's coming on the other side of the eye is possibly even worse. Mm -hmm. than the than what came before and you're never sure what what the outcome is going to be and it's kind of the same with this animation where it's like this is the part where she's providing solace for the sailor and she's looking into him and it gets kind of like romantic and he's like like you know they're going almost for a kiss but then it's just like nah he's a mortal and she's and she's a goddess and mm -hmm. she's almost intangible because she is of the sky and she is of you know of the storm and the clouds so like they can't really connect and like she dissolves and then when he sinks back they're like there's a scene where he's just sinking back onto the water and you're, you're like 
is he gonna die on the other side? Because again, Greek mythology usually ends in tragedy. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so like, will he drown? And then will he see her again in the afterlife? And I, and I love that even for a film that's this short, cause it's just under five minutes, there is a lot, there's tension because you don't know what the outcome is gonna be. So could you just tell me a bit about creating that part of the story where after the storm, like, did you always know that he was gonna survive or like during the animated, in the animation process, did you, was there anything about the plot and the story that you changed? I was actually struggling with that because I couldn't make up my mind on whether he should die or survive or stay inside the storm. And in the end, like you said, like there are difference and she decided to let him go. So he should survive. So after he swimmed up, he would, it was, it was like, he didn't know, he didn't know what happened. Like, oh, what? Uh, that's the end yeah because is it a dream is it like we don't yeah. know if it's reality even like for us the audience like we were in the same space as him where is this like just a dream that he had on the boat while he fell asleep did this event actually occur and again with the storm it kind of is the same like once it's passed when like even if you have the destruction it's such a surreal experience you're just like did we really survive this re <laughs> this like, extremely violent experience and it's kind of the same for him and i guess like we'll never know unless you do like a part two and like he sails home and he tells the story and people like there was no storm on the sea um but i just love that that sense of mystery at the end um and now with regards to developing the story um what was the process like for you not only as an animator but as a director and like undertaking it and making this film because it has been entered into multiple um uh, film festivals so could you just go through the steps of of creating the animated the animation but then also like the the production steps like getting getting in contact with like start event and like the arc and working with like the orchestra and like those and people who helped you through along the way um i spent quite some time um developing the story because i didn't want it to be too complicated i want because it's short and i want everything to be like simple so i was trying to find a simple storylines and at the same time I could add a lot of visual effects and emotions in there and after that I started to because this film was it's not my first film but it was the first film that I started trying VFX so I spent quite some time on learning it and then making the film and I worked with Sturgeon Van Adams on my previous film so it didn't spend me I was just like contact him and like hey could you help me on this film and he said like yeah <laughs> so how long was production for you like from just like your initial sketches and then like throughout the animated mission process and then working with the group how long was the process from beginning to end from beginning to end it's a year and a half I spent the first half year on developing <laughs> the ideas. Wow. <laughs> I need to think about it. Like, the film is only yeah, like just so Simon short, Best, but so much goes into it. And I think like, even for me, like sometimes we don't think about the amount of work that goes into making not only just a, fe a feature film, but even just like a short um, animated film, so much work goes into it. And I think possibly maybe even more than, uh, I think sometimes I think animation is a little bit more difficult than live action because with animation like the format is so different and you have to you're basically doing everything by hand and whereas like for live action we have the actors you have like the production crew and everyone is there and you can adjust things as you go along and it's not hard to move a table you know like when you're looking through a camera it's not hard to say okay move that table a little bit to the left okay the boom might is shooting down can you pull it up when it's animated like any smudge you're basically the way i gotta start over right? <laughs> right especially if you think about it if you're like especially with 2d like 2d is slightly different than 3d because 2d like that like you have to like kind of start over scratch if it's 3d like you get a little i think you get a little bit more wiggle room so like was there any points in time where you're like frustrated you were saying what am i doing or what is the point of doing all of this yes yeah, like all the time like i remember what for one shot I, the shot is about the, we see the whole picture of the storm. So you'll mm -hmm. see like the storm coming in, I think. And that one I had like multiple revisions because I couldn't, I just couldn't figure out the act, the texture I want for the film and the the texture I want for the, show, uh, the shot and the color. 
So I just keep trying and trying and trying, try to make it feel more like clouds instead of some bubbles swirling around, that kind yeah. of feeling. Yeah, I know you mean because it's like this, it has it's swirly, so it's like smooth as like and it's yeah. like more, um uh soft whereas as you said it's not like bubble clouds it's not like if you like if you go like there's all these different clouds like this you have like stratus nimbus and mm -hmm. and you know all of those and i'm sure you probably had to like study the clouds and decide which pattern or which type of cloud you wanted to use yeah <laughs> like uh <laughs> so technical and then okay so there's um i talked about the scene with the water and how i love the animation for the water so i wanted to ask you for the scene where he drops in and he's like the water's like swirling around him I don't know why, but I just thought of like someone dropping something, a glass of water. And I wanted to know that was is if that was a model that you used to create this scene. I was just I wonder if she like looked at a glass of water and dropped something to see if this is on the effect she wanted. <laughs> I, I, I didn't try that, but <laughs> wait, are you talking about the part that he falls into the water and you see like a water spot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, um, I think that one was like everything came from impulsive like i just do it and try to like see what will happen <laughs> yeah no that i just i know it was just a thought that occurred to me it was like it looks like if someone drops something in a glass of water and this is what happens if you take the spoon and you stir around <laughs> <laughs> and and for the modeling um in the credits it says that you and also someone named um kunsha mm -hmm. was the model for for the sailor so i'm um, mm -hmm. you talk about using yourself as a model and then working with an um with someone else to create the the look of the two characters Oh, I start with 2D sketches, um, the design of both Aura and the Sailor. And then we started to build the, the 3D models inside Maya. And for the, the boat, couldn't help me on um, cleaning, the, cleaning the, the geometry of the boat. Mm -hmm. So it would be easier to add a lot of effects or animate later on. Mm. Did you use any motion capture um, elements for the no. for the three? Nothing. No, that was just all from within the program itself. So you didn't use like um like body motion, like like have him like moving around or anything like that. Um, for the characters, they were all keyframed. Oh. So okay. yeah, um, for simulation, I use the 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 fabric on the boat. What is that? You mean the sail? Yeah, the sail. The sail is simulated and also the clouds and oceans mm -hmm. but the character themselves are like hand animated oh, okay that's pretty cool because i just like i just like the way they moved and the the detailing of their of their like the texture their hair is, and like especially the eyes is very good and um so now could you tell me your process of the film festival because i know like for film for getting like films into film festivals can be like tricky and a bit tedious but now we're um i, I kind of do have to mention it now everything is different now with covid like most all of the film festivals that i've been taking part in for the last um i would say six months have all been virtual so mm -hmm. what, what has that process been like for you i would say interesting like I was hoping that I could actually attend festivals, but I couldn't. So everything went online now, but it's also easier that I don't have to actually spend money or do anything. I just sitting in front of my computer <laughs> and just <laughs> browsing through all the films. So it, it's, it's, it's true because I myself, like, I love attending film festivals because I love meeting people. Like, I would have loved to be able to interview you in person and then, like, be sitting in a in a cinema and, like, having the full, like, effect of mm -hmm. hearing this, of, of hearing the, the sound design in the in a the theater and seeing it on a big screen. And, like, I do miss interacting with, like, my fellow film critics and my friends and, and like, you know, the food is always tasty. And, <laughs> but... I, I the, there is the joy of being home and watching these films from home and like there is I think a bit more like for interviews it is a bit more convenient but still it's not the same and and I think and like for you as a filmmaker like like I know my preference as an as an audience like we would we would love to watch these things in a cinema and I know for you as a as an animator and as a designer you want everyone to see to see these films on the screen because that is how you like when you're making your thinking I, i'm picturing this on a big screen mm -hmm. 
Well, yeah, I'm hoping I was hoping people could see it on big screen so they could like experience the dramatic feeling. But because while I was making this film, the COVID happened. So yeah. I, already knew, I already knew that, okay, so maybe it wouldn't happen on the big screen. So everything could go small. That means maybe I could go lazier. I don't have to <laughs> create something with really really high quality or something that was just me being lazy wait so while so um covid was happening while you were still in production with the with the film mm -hmm. like wow. so when when exactly did you finish um production of the film before it was entered into like film festivals i finished the film uh i think somewhere last year uh, may and the COVID oh. happened um March or yeah, March God. was when we officially went into yeah, lockdown. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so we were originally going to record the live recording, mm -hmm. like the previous film, but because of COVID, we couldn't actually gather that many musicians together. Mm -hmm. So Dan Blank, our sound designer, he provided us the his studios and just invite musician there and also kept the social distance and then we all having we had the zoom meetings to yeah. do the live recordings yeah that wow was <laughs> yeah may was just like let me see because i remember um i because i went to sundance in january and i remember when i came home people were talking about they were feeling sick and I knew a friend of mine that was sick and I was like, girl, you better go get tested. And then I was working, um, I work, like, I work part time for a school and we were talking and a lot of and the, the school that I work at is predominantly um, Chinese. Like a lot of the kids are like um, Chinese Canadian and, and their parents and their grandparents are from China. And like some of them went home to because it was close to spring break so some of them went home to china to visit like their grandparents and whatever and we were getting like i remember vividly it was close to the end of february and we were talking and we had a meeting and we were talking about some of the kids there something was going on and they were saying they can't come back and we weren't we didn't really have a name for covid like we like we personally like at that time we didn't really know it as covid but mm -hmm. we were just hearing something is going on in China and our kids might not be able to come back and we were just thinking oh they might not be able to you mean like they're going to be like two three weeks like back like they're like no there's no day and we were like that's when it started to hit home for a lot of us at our school we were like something is going on something <laughs> is very wrong and then in March is when we were like yeah it's a virus and we were talking about it and they were saying um it looks like this thing is going to turn into an epidemic and the funny thing is it wasn't really being discussed among the populace mm -hmm. but because our school and like a lot of schools in our district are like as i said predominantly chinese and have asian students like this was something that we were knowing is a concern so it was funny like i was talking to my sister and then I, on the news i'm like people aren't really treating this with the same <laughs> the same um, the same um sense of urgency that our school was talking about it like mm -hmm. we were talking about we might not we don't know when we'll see our kids again and then lo and behold march spring break and they're like shut down i was like yeah i'm like oh now everyone is catching up <laughs> <laughs> i know like i remember i i hear my friend back in taiwan they were talking about the virus and everyone was really worried there and here it's like everyone was like chilled <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was so fun weird. and it was so it's and it's and i think this is a year now this we're in um April today's April third we're recording and it's a full year. Now that I think about it, yeah, because it's Easter weekend, spring break this time. So it's like it's Easter weekend, mm -hmm. so like spring break. Maybe, like this is it, it, it's a full year, and I'm just thinking. I literally remember just came to my head the last day of school. I was in the car with my friend was dropping me to the train station, and we were talking about it, and we had like just thinking about it, like we had no idea that like I I haven't gone back to school. Um, because I'm immunocompromised, so I, I couldn't like going back to school in September mm -hmm. was was impossible for me. And then I had surgery, and then I got sick. I got COVID. How I don't know because I've been <laughs> indoors. And, <laughs> but they is it's so surreal. And then I watched this this um, documentary called In the Same Breath, uh -huh. um, by I think it's Nan Fu Wang, and 
like it's so surreal when you think about it. And then like as as in film as a film critic and they think about how this pandemic has affected the film industry and like for you like you had to change the way you intended to direct this film and like this it, it has i think impacted us in a way that i don't think is quantifiable like we can never know like you don't know what 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 the outcome of your film could have been if you had recorded it live i think mm -hmm. maybe something may have gone like differently in the studio you'd be like okay maybe the score doesn't work this way but you had to like make compromises and mm -hmm. like like we're doing this again as i said virtually where we could have been doing it live and it's just it's just so interesting to think about how these things i think affect us not only as people but as artists and like and in our professions as well and i'm wondering for you um because i think for a lot of people like and i think it's been kind of where where there have been like so many films made within the pandemic within the space of time and i think it's changed up for this per perspective for a lot of people like there are a lot of films that, that are being made about the pandemic there's even i think a, a chinese drama about the pandemic and i'm like we're still in this how are you making a drama <laughs> about this but I do want to ask you if, the, if like what has happened has changed your perspective as a director and as an animator about the way you think about like because so much of I think for directors and creatives like they put so much of their perspective of life into their art I wanted to ask you if there's anything about what you've been experiencing has affected about the way you think of your craft oh about pandemic <laughs> Not, well, not about the pandemic, but just the way it's like maybe made you change about the way you look at um your art. Like if they're like like is there do you ever see yourself making an animation about this particular um time that we're living in? Even though I like we're still within the pandemic, like Canada is going like Toronto is going back into lockdown again soon. <laughs> no, I I think I think the lesson I learned from this was you have to be flexible and mm -hmm. go with the flow, like. <laughs> I think I'm quite lucky because I'm doing animation. So most of my work happens on computers. So it wouldn't be affected by the whole things too much. Mm. Well, I, I think that's also the beauty of working indoors. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, well, you know, as you say, like everything I do on a computer, so thing, but if anything, but has it um like, is this your first film festival? This is your first festival season? Mm, no, I think last year was my festival season. Wait, are you talking about for this film? For this film, like this is so this is a festival season for Aura, but for your, yeah, for for your previous film, did you have did you experience the film any film festivals for yeah. your previous film? My previous film was uh, is Between the Shadows. Yeah, and the 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 festival season was maybe last year or the year before last year. <laughs> Me 2019 because last year 2020. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 2019. <laughs> I know time is relative in this mm -hmm. pandemic. Like time, mean, time means nothing, people. <laughs> so this is your. So this is yeah. So this is the first um, film festival. Or for you, like for your film, like was what has experience been like for you, like getting through film festivals, like submissions and um and like you know going through the process of having it being selected and is there anything that you that made you realize okay the, this process is difficult but it is definitely worth it because it can be i think i, I think from being like submissions and like you were never sure of like if your film is going to be selected and then it is and you're thinking okay i can do this so now i can do another i can submit it again and again into other festivals i, I would say the whole process was like doing lottery for me like i didn't actually for me, it was just like, okay, this is the time for you to submit to festivals. And so you were just doing, keep doing it and for maybe for a few months and, and wait for the result. Like, I didn't actually pay too much attention on whether I would get in or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really, you're just like, I'm just going to submit it and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess that's like I guess that kind of like also eases the pressure off of you because you're not like super like you're not like just like pressuring yourself to like I have to get it into this particular way. Yeah. Like, I'm just gonna take my luck where I can. Yeah, I pick festival space on some random reason, like, <laughs> oh I like this structure, I like the building, oh I like your website. Like <laughs> 
that's kind of fun that's super funny to me <laughs> you're like i love your package that's kind of like me i buy things based on packaging i'm like you look pretty also mm -hmm. like you're, you're like you're calling to me <laughs> <laughs> you're like your website is i like the colors on your website submit <laughs> yeah oh my gosh um um is there any are, are there any films that you're working on at the moment that you can speak about or like are there any like because like your like aura is kind of like based on like greek mythology as you said are there any types of um genres that you're like you're in, that you want to work on like for instance like animated action short or you know um sci-fi for me i like everything relate to a little bit of fantasy hmm. and a film i'm working now it's um i'm the I'm the visual designer and VFX and lighting artist on an animated short film. And it's a short film for School on Wheel. It's a, it, they are trying to promote the, the organizations. And the story was about, it's about a little girl who has difficulties in readings and she struggles in her imaginations and trying to find her way out out of the out of her difficulties you mean um, when you say like i'm um, struggling with readings you mean does she have like a learning disability yeah like oh i well, i I'm, this is well this is interesting to me because i'm like dyslexic and i also have like cognitive impairment like, do you mind uh -huh. me, um, me asking what um learning disability she has uh like i'm not i'm not familiar with the the thing but it's like when you're reading maybe the 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 words or the letters were like oh dyslexia oh okay yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. That, that is, like for me that's dyslexia um for me the way how the words um they, they don't necessarily move but i re like they get rearranged in my in my mm. brain so like i can read for instance like dog and in my head i know the word is supposed to be dog but i'm seeing something like the words the letters get switched around mm -hmm. and then like for me um like if i if a paragraph has like way too many words it doesn't make sense for me. Um, so like I sometimes I have to read something like two, three times to understand it. That's something that happened to me too. <laughs> like when it's like a paragraph and I would be like, okay, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, just I just think it's interesting. And because like for me, um, growing up, I never really saw like things like dyslexia or learning disabilities being discussed mm -hmm. on TV. Um, like one of the first times I have a clear memory of of dyslexia in particular being a part of a major storyline was um not 2020 i would say 2019 where um star trek discovery where spock like they mm -hmm. discussed spock having um a learning disability disability and it's dyslexia and i thought it was like super interesting because and it made me think like in all my life i very rarely seen learning disabilities in particular dyslexia being um being part of a character's story and then you have a character that is Fox. so then for you to be talking about working with the animation about that i would love to see how it um it manifests because like, for everyone like it's, it's like it does look different like for me it's not like um like they're moving all of the pages but it can happen with, like one or two words in a sentence mm -hmm. or like maybe an, an entire paragraph doesn't change and like even with like the cognitive impairment what happens with me is i'll be reading something and my brain literally does not process certain like words be, mm -hmm. So like I can have a paragraph and like half the paragraph, my brain doesn't process the images. So it's mm -hmm. just, like, are the words. So it's like, I'll be reading it. And then like my brain has to kind of like fill in the words to make the sentences make sense. Mm -hmm. so, I'll, so I can read it now. I'm like, well, that's, that's what's happening. And then I'll go back and say, but that's not what I read like two minutes ago. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll be like texting and like I'll miss I'll miss like I miss letters in a sentence because I'm I'm thinking the word but this, the letter doesn't turn up on mm -hmm. the page because my brain isn't translating what I'm thinking into like my hands me creating the word so it's just like so I just like really interested in I would love to see what that project project looks like when you guys are done. Wow, that's really interesting. You just gave me some ideas on, on how I could play with the visuals. Like, yeah. yeah. It is interesting because I think for a lot of people with like learning disabilities, like we, like my mom always used to say for me, like, you know, you know the phrase, think outside the box. Mm -hmm. My mom used to tell me there is no box because the way I think about things is like different to other people. Mm -hmm. And the way I process information is different. And so like teachers would ask me, like I, I there's um, a type of dyslexia that has to do with math. Like I don't have that type of dyslexia, but the thing is for me, like if you ask me to do like long division, I can't do it. I can't mm. do it like I can do like up to like three levels, but you know, like, when it goes on and on, I can't. It's easier for me to process 
and think in my head and come up with the the, the solution in my head and then to do it on paper it doesn't make sense for me to do it on paper <laughs> like i get it problems i get it problems with my teachers all the time teachers be like show me the work i'm like i can't show you the work because if i do you're gonna tell me that i'm wrong and i'll be like is the answer to correct they're like yes we have to show. i'm like why are you concerned about my working is my answer correct i didn't cheat so like mm -hmm. just be happy i came up with the right solution like, <laughs> but I, I, mean, I was talking about this with my friends recently and i'm like so many teachers don't understand how people with dyslexia and different learning disabilities think like I'm a very abstract thinker. And I think that's why I'm drawn mm. to like things like science fiction and like animation that's kind of like 3D because like my thinking is kind of abstract. But like mm -hmm. I picture things in like almost not in a 3D, but I think of I picture things in like an abstract way almost. And so that's how my brain works. So that's why I think I like films like yours because it's kind of like the same thing. Like you guys create in this abstract, mm -hmm. <laughs> in this abstract universe in, within a computer anyway. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, the human brain is fascinating and weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, oh, I wanted to ask you, so, and this is something I always like to ask my interviewees, like what got you into to your craft? What got you into animation? Like why animation instead of like live action film? Uh, I would say it was just a coincidence. Like I, I didn't actually like animations. I was more, <laughs> I thought I would become, illustrator in the illustrator or mm. designers and like how i pick festivals i i was picking a major and i couldn't make up my mind so i just put all the school together and decided to pick which school is prettier and i pick a school and that school <laughs> happened to have animation program and that was the point i started to join animations and and after that i started to I really like the way that we can create story, create words and mm. storytelling in animation. Like, I think it's more f flexible than live actions. Like, yeah. 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 I think with animation, like you, you would say the possibilities are limitless or mm -hmm. is as limited as our imagination is. And like the human, I think the human brain for has an extreme capacity for for imagination in the fact of like how we can craft stories like you craft stories from nothing and it starts with a blank canvas for you and then you have this and you have a film like aura and then is then you have a full story in five minutes and you would think um i think when you start a film you're like okay what kind of story can she give me in five minutes but you give like a whole almost like this man having an existential crisis <laughs> of reality <laughs> within five minutes <laughs> Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Like I, you, I can't believe you picked it. You got into this. You're like, I'll go to the school because it's. Free. <laughs> but I think that's also a great way to live life because like you're you're just like you're spontaneous. But then it's just like once you made the decision, you just went full on. And you're just like, I'm gonna do the best. I'm gonna just mm -hmm. do everything to the best of my ability with it. Yeah, just follow the flow. <laughs> you know what to say? Follow your bliss. <laughs> Um, so is there anything, um, before we wrap up, is there anything you'd like to say, not only about art, about just about um, art in general or anything thoughts you'd like to share with the art, with, um, with those listening and watching? Oh my god, this is a hard question. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, enjoy the art. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. That's okay. Yeah. Like that's still a good thing. Enjoy the art because, like, honestly, the way life is at the moment is just like enjoy the small things. Like, take the moment to like you know just take a breath and and enjoy your art. Like, I think is I think it's important for us to enjoy what we're doing and to find something. I think every day, like for me, I try to find something every day to laugh about and mm -hmm. and and try to find something to enjoy because life would be so so much more difficult than it is right now if you didn't take the time to just enjoy our like that you know like whether it's like we can't really go we can't go to museums to like our art anymore well yeah anymore i don't know when i'll ever be able to go to a museum to like our art but you know we have like the medium of tv and we have the medium of of film and that we can enjoy and we can enjoy these things and enjoying you're speaking about enjoying art where they or is there any animation any animated film that is like maybe your favorite art thing or one that you draw inspiration from because when I was watching this, I kind of thought of like Disney's Hercules and I love like the one with the um I know of the, the muses, like the song. Mm -hmm. I love those songs. Like the Me muses. too. I love the film. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think it was my childhood, one of my childhood favorite. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. I love the muses. I I'm always talking about Disney films on TV, um, on Twitter, and I'm always singing the songs. Like just the other day, I was talking about the Lion King and Lion King Two. It was talking about <laughs> we talk about animation and the music, but I'm like, people, have you listened to the songs from Simba's Pray? Like those songs mm -hmm. are good. And then of course there is like the Prince of Egypt. We need to want to talk about two D oh, animation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so good so like you like for you you like hercules and it kind of does kind of like go into like aura like they're both like greek mythology and those mm -hmm. kind of things so i did think about that especially the cloud designs um but is there any like um any other animated film or live action film that you draw inspiration from as a creative or that you just love as a fan yeah um like i just love animated films especially 2d's films like those 2D anime, uh, 2D Disney animations. Yeah. And but for this film, but for Aura, most of the inspiration came from other art forms like architecture, sculptures, mm -hmm. like photographies, like anything outside animations. I think it provides me more space to create. Mm. Yeah, I, I I I just love art and I just love film and because they can just we can I think one of the reasons I just love doing this is like speaking to people like you with getting I like seeing how people we look at the world and we are able to like create things and be inspired to create because I with all art I don't think our society would be as beautiful as it is and I think it's important for us to like just be able to like create stories so like, I love when like directors like you can create a whole story and you have these two characters and you're able to create these these people out of <laughs> out of nothing and you're and we and we and like somehow we're still able to relate to them and we're still able to find joy in these in these stories especially in these extremely COVID days as I call them and I just want to thank you for the film because I think it's really beautiful I love the score and again as I said I love the animation for it and I, I can't wait to see what else you're doing especially the 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 the, the, pro, the project you talked about I would love to be able to see that when it's finished mm -hmm. and um again thank you so much for speaking with me Chin Chin <laughs> thank you too thank you for watching my films and <laughs> talk to me today <laughs> It was great fun. <laughs> Again, thank you everyone for watching um, this episode of Carolyn Talks, and thank you Chun Chun for speaking with me about her film Ara. This has been a I love talking with you. This is so much fun. <laughs> and um, everyone, please <laughs> stay safe. And you can check out all of any of my other interviews with Carolyn Talks here on the YouTube channel as well on the But Why Though podcast.com site you can find karen and talk you can find it under karen and talk so here's what happened podcast as well as my korean drama um, podcast which is beyond the romance uh well not korean dramas i say all dramas because i do dramas from like different asian countries so you can check that out on beyond the romance on but why the podcast.com as well as here on the my youtube channel and my interviews for the africa the african american film critics association on our youtube channel here which i'll provide a link in the description box down below and i'll provide a link for um any other film festivals that our will be showing at so until the next episode everyone please stay safe